Stop right there. Look at this engine. This is Raptor 3, and it's already pushing the limits of physics. But here at Starbase, they're not stopping. SpaceX is designing Raptor 4, and Elon Musk just promised it will be 10 times cheaper per ton of thrust than the Merlin engine. 10 times cheaper. I mean, the Merlin is already the gold standard for affordability in aerospace. If this happens, it's not just an upgrade, it's a complete industry reset. Today, we're opening up the hangar doors to dive deep into this engineering insanity, and we're going to be tracking two absolutely crucial questions that are hanging over Starship's future. First, on the engineering side, how in the world do they manage to make an engine that runs at record pressure, around 350 bar in Raptor 3, even lighter and stronger to hit that TWR goal of over 220? That seems to defy physics. And second, the real killer question, can SpaceX actually overcome the cost of the raw materials? We're talking about exotic high nickel superalloys to hit that dream target of under $250,000 per engine. Or is that figure just a Martian fantasy? This is the battle for Starship's future, and we are diving deep into the engineering strategy right now. All right, let's set the stage. For years, Merlin was the untouchable champion. Why? Simplicity. It uses that basic gas generator cycle, venting exhaust just to power the pumps. It's inefficient on fuel, but it's cheap, it's light, and it holds the world record for both thrust to weight and thrust to cost. Raptor, on the other hand, is the hyper-efficient Brainiac, full-flow staged combustion. It reuses every molecule to get phenomenal ISP, but that complexity initially made it heavier and much more expensive per unit of thrust than Merlin. Musk knew this was a problem. High ISP is great, but affordability and lightness are essential for a reusable Mars transport. Fast forward six years of iteration, Raptor 3 has already won the TWR battle. They pushed chamber pressure to around 350 bar and simplified the design, making an engine that is both monstrously powerful and, for the first time, lighter per unit of thrust than Merlin. That engineering battle is won. Now, for the 10x leap of Raptor 4, the focus is manufacturing brutality. It's all about the assembly line. They're moving away from heavy, complex, bolted flanges, like the joint between the chamber and the manifold, and switching to simpler, lighter, welded joints. They're also eliminating external plumbing with that fantastic pipeless architecture. Every single piece of tubing, every bolt, every sensor not absolutely necessary is gone. This is designing for the automated factory floor, not the test stand. By cutting mass and increasing thrust to that estimated 330 tons, they achieve a projected TWR of around 220. That means they can put more payload on Starship for the same dollar. But now we come to the real fight, the one against the price tag. The goal of under $250,000 per engine is where the rubber meets the road. We know the combustion chambers require super exotic, high nickel super alloys, materials that are intrinsically expensive. Automation, welding, and simplification help cut labor, but they can't eliminate the raw material cost. This is the ultimate test of the SpaceX philosophy. Can their in-house materials development and rapid manufacturing scale up enough to beat the material science itself? Expensive. Automation, welding, and simplification help cut labor, but they can't eliminate the raw material cost. This is the ultimate test of the SpaceX philosophy. Can their in-house materials development and rapid manufacturing scale up enough to beat the material science itself? Raptor 4 isn't just an engine, it's the financial key to Mars colonization. It proves that the relentless pursuit of high performance must be coupled with an equally relentless pursuit of low cost. So here's my question for the Booster Bay crew. What do you think is the biggest risk for Raptor 4? Is it the metallurgy required to handle super high pressure, or the simple fact that you can't make those exotic alloys cheap enough? 
Let me know your take in the comments, and if you want to keep up with the engineering that is truly making Starship a reality, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right now and join the Booster Bay crew. We track the builds, the tests, and the breakthroughs every single week. Thanks for docking with us. I'll see you in the next one.